Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at Santa Claus. This is from Dragon number 44 from December of 1980. Unless you think that I'm pirating or something, I'm not. I bought the TSR Dragon 1 through 250 CD set back in the day and downloaded it, you know, back in, I think it was 99, downloaded it to my computer. I made the mistake of loaning it to one of my players who then kind of dropped off the face of the earth and unfortunately I've found it since died. So I'll never see that again, but at least I had copied them before I let that go. But we have nothing but the ho-ho-ho truth. This is Santa Claus from 1980. This is kind of neat because it's just a fun one-page little article about St. Nick, and it goes into who he might be and what his powers and abilities are. I used this in a game, and I'll, I'll explain that uh, in a little bit. Santa Claus, outside of Legends, what do we really know? We're going to extrapolate some stuff. First, we have direct evidence that Claus's race is Elf, because he's described as a right jolly old Elf in Clement Moore's Twas the Night Before Christmas. And I know Clement Moore is disputed to have written that. I'm not going to go into that here. Um, I'm inclined to believe that he's at least partly right because of uh, Claus's age, the author says. This is written by Douglas Law Loss. Douglas Loss. I'm inclined to believe he has a bit of halfling blood in him, too. His affinity for brightly colored, colored clothing would suggest that he's part halfling. Then you have an elf halfling. But what of his class? He's obviously a re religious guy, as his principal appearances coincide with the Winter Solstice Religious Festival, one of the major planetary gods. His teachings tend to be secularized versions of that. In fact, he's also known as St. Nicholas. While he's never been known to use standard cleric spells, I think we have strong evidence of cleric as one of his classes. We have even stronger evidence for Santa being a magic user of extremely high level. Besides the incredible strength of his magic, we know he's a high level because he's established a stronghold at the North Pole and attracted many elven, or perhaps elven halfling followers. He's per put a permanent, I think it's supposed to be flight spell, not night spell, on eight reindeer. He's cast an extremely powerful and permanent until the spelled mirror image of himself, his sleigh, and his reindeer. That's so he can appear in many places at once, I guess. He and his followers use an extraordinary amount of permanent create object spells to produce the goods that they distribute. Through the use of wizard eye spells, he knows when you're sleeping and he knows when you're awake. And by casting no alignment, he knows if you've been bad or good. All this indicates a very experienced magic user. So, an elven, halfling, cleric magic user. But what alignment? Obviously some form of good. Many scholars opt for the immediate thought of lawful good. But I lean to neutral good. Consider the regular repetition of kindly acts he does each year precludes any kind of chaotic nature, but a close description of those acts must lead to the conclusion that some of them are not lawful. He lands on the roof of your house, slips through your chimney, and illegally enters. I've always thought that Santa he breaks into your house every year. He leaves multitudes of gifts that, if they are not carefully considered, could ruin the economy of the planet. These are obviously deeds of someone of neutral good alignment, interested only in as much good as he can do, unconcerned about the lawful end of it. So far, we have a very high-level, neutral, good, elven halfling, cleric magic user. As yet, we know nothing of his personal characteristics. Perhaps a little speculation can help. His dexterity's got to be high. How could somebody that rotund slip down all that, those chimneys? So it's got to be a 17 or 18. I agree. His charisma may be beyond measure. If you, he's, Everybody's fanatical about Santa Claus. If somebody said Santa needed you, wouldn't you do what you could to get there? To be as high-level magic user as he is, he has to have an intelligence of 18, and his wisdom must be very high, too. His strength and con are less clear. We really know nothing about his strength. His constitution is probably high to be able to absorb all the magic, but we have no direct evidence of this. What about psionic powers? We're going to skip that part because the author assumes that psionic powers just complicate the picture needlessly. I agree, by the way. Uh, it's truly unfortunate that such a famous and revered figure as Santa Claus should be known to us only through conjecture and speculation. It would be a boon to the world if we knew the facts about him, but that would only happen if someone were able to get him to take a little time on his yearly rounds to tell us about himself. Sadly, no one has ever successfully researched a hold Santa spell, and it's not likely to happen this year either. So there you have it. Just a little tongue-in-cheek look at a right jolly old elf or elf halfling with a neat little picture of Santa dropping down an orc's chimney to give him his goodies for the year. I, I enjoyed this, and uh, at this point, uh, this is going to be for... Uh, older people so if you have young ones in the audience uh you might want to send them out this is nothing going to be racy or anything it's just going to be not for children's ears 
I'll give you a second. Hum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Okay, here we go. If the kids are out of earshot, here we are. I did a game where I featured Santa Claus, and the idea of the game was for a 7th and 8th level group. The idea of the game was that Santa had been shot down and taken hostage by the Grinch. I made the Grinch a 10-hit dice troll with a really good armor class, good attacks and damage, uh, regenerating three points per round starting the very first round, and Max, his dog, was a hellhound. And the idea of the game was to get through the various minions the Grinch had working in his lair and rescue Santa, thus saving Christmas. I did this at the old club I used to belong to. Uh, I believe it was for Christmas of 81. I got a lot of good response to it. The players had a lot of fun with it. There were about 10 players in the game. I had built it that I could add or subtract minions as I needed to. And then I had a couple of versions of the Grinch built up because I at that club I never knew how many people were going to sit down. So I always had to kind of be flexible with my, my game design. But if anything, that helped me grow my game design. I was only in D&D about a year and a half when I ran this. But uh, yeah, so the uh, Grinch was a, a troll. Max was a hellhound and Santa had been taken hostage and it was up to the players to rescue Santa and save Christmas. So there you have it. Uh, just a silly little game I did years and years ago. And I used this article as a lot of the basis for it. So that's all I've got to say today on page 121. I, I want to wish you and yours a happy holiday time. And I'll see you next time on page 121.